Lord, thank you so much for this day. It's a privilege to sit at your feet and listen to the words, these beautiful words of life. We ask, dear Father, that as we sit down this day and as we relish the things that you have prepared for us, O oh Lord, may we find satisfaction in the name of Jesus Christ. These things we ask in the same name that saves the name of Jesus, who is our Lord and who is our Savior. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, Medivani Camp 2020. Ero kamano, wadu wakonyasa ero kamano. Mami wakinde, wadu wacheng maka uono. Kriyo makende, awa kwayo ni kwe, obed e chokruok. Nyithindo obed pin, jiduto yud kama ginya lobede, mondo giwinj wach nyasae sa makende ni. I'm saying let us all be settled so that we get what God has for us this particular hour. Sama kenda duwa duwa kujiduto, nuwa bedu tuolo e chokruo. Nuwa bedu at the feet of Jesus Christ. Jogotmani e chokruo ka uwo no wane anegi ba. Members of God in the congregation, let's see by show of hands. Waruwa kujia ugoto wacho ni inango. Amen. Amen. May you be blessed. Your Riverside. Riverside members. Watch on your Riverside nango. Amen. May you be blessed. Your Kasimba A. Members of Kasimba A. Gine Magini Hospitality Kawono. They are in charge of our hospitality I'm today. I'm seeing El Doyo is at that corner. Wa watch on again nango. Amen. Amen. Kasimba B members. Members of Kasimba B. Amen, amen. Let's welcome them. Be free in the congregation. Your Agama. Sabbath school. Your Agama. Your Agama Sabbath school. Amen. Be free in the congregation. Mano form district. Mamilimani Oyugi's church. They form Oyugi's Milimani district. How are you going to tomorrow? Moko I. Oyugi's Milimani district church. If we have any guest who is not a member of the Milimani district, let us see so that we can welcome them. We have many guests stand so that you can be welcomed. Dr. Luoch of Oyugi's East, please, privilege. Is he was just stand up? Chungi. And you makende adhimi yo jakwath Dr. Oluwach, omos ji ilowe lo duto, mawango ikiche, udiyo chikmaka uo no. As on behalf of all the guests. Amen. Aduoko matek ni keche njiranda got kacha. He is a neighbor at God. To diga mabor Oyugi's East. But he worships at Oyugi's East far away. Wadwe konya sairo kamano. We thank God. Uh, this opportunity, our district pastor, we give to our district pastor to greet the congregation. Amen. You are all welcome in the, this meeting. Amen. Mbeleka, nyasayo yeni tunjade, utimtich mbeleka. We have three souls. One go wadwa Huntington Omondi. Brother Huntington Omondi. All the, All the time. God is, is good. good. And that is his nature. To break the bread of life is Pastor Collins Oyamo. And Pastor Collins Oyamo. Obru we accord at the appointed time. May God keep us. Let us be peaceful so that we listen to the word of God. And and uh, speaking is uh, Millicent Ndenya. Be free. Hear the word of God. Thank you.
thank you very much. I honored uh, Elder One last year. May God bless you. Uh, Mose Udi Nyasai Bear. Kendika Kanyasai Bear. Yomoye Kuobe. Thank you very much. And Tuoloma Kenda Enya. Manyasai, Manyasai, Chomi Wa Tuolo. We thank God for this opportunity that we may approach his throne this moment to give him thanks. Our reading key text for the day in Acts chapter 28 verse 3 up to 6 Acts chapter 28 Matindo Adek Nyakauchel, verse 3 to 6, which says, But when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, a viper came out because of, heat, of the heat and fastened on his hand. So when the natives saw the creature hanging from his hand, they said to one another, No doubt this man is a murderer. Whom, though he has escaped the sea, yet justice does not allow to live. But he shook off the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. Number six, however, they were expecting that he would swell up or suddenly fall down dead. But after they had looked, for a long time, so no arm came to him. They changed their minds and said that he was a god. May God bless the reading. Why you do and why when kiche? We'll st uh, get our theme song. Uh, we're number two twelve. Two twelve in our low hymns. Thank you. 
valuable. Dedication and honor is given unto thee, the Most High God, our Buckler, the King of our salvation. Mighty Jesus left on our own will be useless, will not be all, will be nobody. That's why we invite thee in a very special way. Remain the sole initiator of everything in our lives. Use thy servant as thy own instrument. Use thy servant as thy own vessel. May you encircling with thy ring of fire so that you render the plans of our enemies useless. Might Jesus, we know thee that this moment is set for thee, is set apart, special moment, a moment that is worth it, a moment that, is, that acknowledges thee for everything. Let us adore thee when there is still time. May, may thy blessings cherish upon everybody that has come to this camp meeting, mighty Jesus. Thank you abundantly. May you hear our supplications as we have called. In the name of Jesus we pray. Tuoloma kamaini. Waka wa luongo welo. Maka uono welo mawele. We are, are inviting our yeah. guest choir, heirs of, heirs of God's kingdom, of God's kingdom, for a special item. We want to pack your side, come and worship thy God in a special way. Amen. A special item. Thank you. Collins Oyamo. Onda moka onda mo magoyo wa 
Masika himba gidorote kongi mana Toka taka mano na bege chemi roti Sunataya pile nyaka Ana chopi ana bege chil Okana ol Nyaka tish na rum chutho Kata pinyera kata pinyo ngoya Hakna gola etisho Atwe okanda yesu eo kumbanda Muzika Wakna gola etichu, atwe okanda yesu, eo kumbanda Aha, aha, adigichi, okanda nur, nyaka tish, noru mchutho Kata pinyera, kata pinyo angoya, wakna gola etichu, atwe okanda yesu, eo kumbanda Adigichi okanda nur, nyaka tish na rumchutho strange times we are living in that we can't shake hands and we we can't sit together this is bad if there is a reason why i want to go to heaven now corona is one of the reasons uh, good afternoon everyone god is good and all the time Yes, uh, now the doctor claims that he is from God. I don't understand. <laughs> because doctor is my neighbor. Now I must be from God too. I don't understand. <laughs> uh, I thank you so much for coming and God bless you people. Our sermon is entitled Shaking Beasts. Let us pray, and I want to pray with the third stanza of the song, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. Thou art given and forgiven, ever blessing, ever blessed, wellspring of the joy of living, ocean depth of happy rest. Thou the Father, Christ our brother, all who live in love are thine. Teach us how to love each other and lift us to the joy divine. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. The Bible says in the book of Acts, verse 3 to 6 of chapter 28, I want to read from the King James Version because that's where I get the sermon title. The Bible says, and when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks, when he had gathered a bundle of sticks, oh, let me read, let me read, and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened his hand, fastened on his hand. And when the barbarian saw that the venomous beast hung on his hand, they said among themselves, no doubt, this man is a murderer. Whom though he hath escaped the sea, yet virgin suffereth not to live. And he shook off the beast into the fire, and felt no harm. Howbeit they looked when he should have swollen or fallen down suddenly. But after they had looked a great while, and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a god. 
God bless the reading. Amen. Yesagwe the somo logindiko mainigo. Now in the judgment hall of Festus and Agrippa. Eod bura mara Festus Agrippa. Paul is heard giving his last appeal. Paulo woyo koti mulungu ni mogik. You must understand that this is the last the last uh, uh, statement that comes from this a powerful preacher magie weche mogik mowoke doja yalo mara uma and the next after this situation tokmano paul is seen in a ship heading to rome oido ye ochomo rumi the words were i appeal to caesar oachoni akwayo caesar i appeal to caesar akwayo kaisari paul at this moment in his life Engima mar Paulo sechege was fearful that the the the, the king Agrippa and Festus no lur ni Caesar toko de Festo they would have handed him over to the Jews nenya lo kawe mabole lwet do yahudi and so he said i am a roman to achoni anja rumi you cannot hand me over to I appeal to Caesar. Akwayo Kaisari. Oh his tired body in the judgment hall. Carrying rock mare nyape odbura. Had showed the image of a man who had spent all his energy. Oneno reka jal mosetio kotek rock mage duto for the sake of the savior. Nikech Yesu. Now more than ever his word to live is Christ to die is gain could be felt. Kum en sechege watchman owacho ni en kodak to dark ne Christo ko tho to tho ne Christo neno ya yanga. And though failing in strength. Kata bere ni teko mare dok pin. His eyes had a firm gate on the glory of life to come. Wange ne menyo kum gima mabiro. The Lord had assured him. Nyasai no se singo yango ne. The God had told him Paul my grace is sufficient. No se kone ni teko ma ngono mara oro mi. Now this is a departure from the person we meet in the book of Acts chapter 9. Waro mogi pogru ok kum jal mane waro mogo do chi ne book mati chi ocho chi ko. Paul is introduced to us as a man who was zealous for his work. John ne waro mogo do Paulo jal mane ni gi miu mo kum ti mo ti. The Bible says he came breathing threatenings. No biro ko ul o catch and Paul was ready to kill anyone kendo no ikore mar nego jal mora mora who was dissimilar to the faith of the fathers mane timo ataro mar ye mar kwerene it is in the acts in acts chapter 9 on dikati jotio chiko that the bible tells us that jesus came to recruit paul mane biblos wacho ni yesu obiro mondo ruak paul be dakanyo i want to submit this and i know pastor will agree with me apa jadolo ang no ye koda kum gima da wacho that if jesus had not recruited paul nikadine yesu e moko ruak pole ye then christ Christianity would have suffered. Christ o bedo di maru Cristo de o kodimbele. It would have taken a long time. Do ka o kinde mato for Christianity to get to the levels Paul took it. Mondo bedo ngima mar do Cristo landre because Paul single-handedly catch Paulo kende one was bringing down Christianity. Netie ko bedo o Cristo. And whenever people heard the name of Paul, kane jio wi do ko to mnyeng Paulo. The disciples were shaken. Do ponjire ne tetni. Now Paul was not just coming with aggression. Paulo no bia bia ko catch. But Paul was coming with intellect too. No biro girie ko be. Oh child of God, Jesus is also interested in Yesu bendo dich go bongo maler Jesus does not only recruit fools he recruits smart people okorwak mana jok mo fuo kende o dich gi jok mo bongo giler and so while paul was headed to damascus you know the story the near your did damascus the bible says that jesus met him on the way to damascus biblo swacho ni yesu no romo kode yo kodi damascus at noon day there was light greater than the sun nen karu du chieng to lerma no wok ne duong molo mar wang chieng and jesus wrestled paul from his from his horse yes no go amen kod paulo e vinas paul on the ground ma paulo lo are lo and paul cried I didn't say who are you lord you know you are kokoni manonga who are you lord in our word and jesus spoke to him and said i am jesus whom you persecute eka yesu no do kenyan yesu misando oh i am reminded that when we persecute children of god paruna ni kwa sando jo kenyan sae we are persecuting jesus himself wasando yesu won and jesus takes it seriously ndo yesu kawe ka gima ni ginengo so jesus tells paul that arise okono paulo ni amalo i want you to get into the city adu ani modi donje ibo I have prepared someone to take care of you. I say ko jalmano to mi o mi read. Oh child of God. Tinya sai. One of the greatest preachers of the modern era. A chiel ku mjo yalo magting masani. By the name Charles Haddon Spurgeon says. Mi ngoni Charles Spurgeon that God recruit 
his servants in the highland of affliction. God recruits his servants. God recruits. He brings on board people who have gone through stress and distress. These are the people God recruits for, for his ministry. Oh, show me a powerful preacher. And I will show you the history behind the preacher. I can almost vouch with my life that they had been of service to the devil. Let me tell you this, the Bible says that Paul was recruited and he who was considered the worst of them all was recruited to be the best of his witnesses. And, and you understand that when Paul comes into the ministry he came with all the zeal that he had applied on the other side. And as he comes to serve God he does not come as Peter or James or John. He comes into the ministry as one who has been plucked from the fire. He who understands that he was lost. Who understands that he had no privilege. Who understands that it is by the grace and grace alone. And so as he steps into the ministry, oh, he takes the gospel a notch higher. Now you should understand that three quarters of the New Testament Ade is written by Paul. Three quarters written by him. And I want you to understand this. That when Peter and John could not explain Christianity, it took Paul to come into Christianity and explain Christianity. And I, like I said, when we began that the book of Romans is his best treatise on theology. And and if you want to understand Paul, read the book of Romans. Just read the book, book of Romans. And so Paul does not only bring zeal, but Paul comes with eloquence. And he comes with tact. He comes with erudition. Being a scholar of the Old Testament, oh, Paul writes more books in the Bible compared to other authors. And second to Paul is Moses. He was also a prolific scholar. And so Paul comes to the ministry as a writer. He comes as a preacher. He comes as a missionary. And he was a minister, a minister without, com without competition. He was on his own level. Now Paul had had an illustrious career. When, when you come with me to the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 11 and verses 22 to 27, or oh, you hear this man from Tarsus say, these things. That are they Hebrews? I am a Hebrew. Are they Israelites? So are I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. In labors. Come teach. Abundant in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in deaths often, Jews five times received forty stripes. Forty stripes. 
Thrice I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in no the deep. Journeys often in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils by own, my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea in perils among false brethren and you, know, you know false brethren are many in weariness and in painfulness in watchings often in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. And now as he stands in the judgment hall of Agrippa, he says, I appeal to Caesar. Now you should understand that I, I, I have considered that statement, I have thought that that was the final statement from Paul that brought him down. Because when he appeals to Caesar, when he says he wants to go to Caesar, then you see the book of Acts coming to an end. By the way, it's, it's, I, I think this, there's a problem with naming it Acts of the Apostles. Because when you call it the Acts of the Apostles, you need all the Apostles contributing. But, but when you say it's the acts of Paul, which I believe okay, it's the acts of Paul, you, Paul, you see Paul, Paul taking over from chapter 9 and he goes all through to the end of the book. Now the book is more about what Paul did than what the apostles did. So when he speaks of his desire to seek Caesar, I think that was last straw that broke his ministry. Oh, for I argue like this child of God. I do not appeal to a human being. I do not appeal to human beings. I only appeal to God. And so Paul should have said, I appeal to the Most High. But Paul appealed to Caesar. Now the Caesar of that time was Nero. He was this last Roman emperor of the Julio Claudian dynasty. Oh, history tells us that he was an evil man. He was a man who was guilty of matricide. He had killed his own mother. He was guilty of homosexuality. And one day for fun, he burnt people's houses. And he didn't take the blame, he blamed other people. And the other people were killed for what he had done. And to this man, Caesar was a and Paul was appealing. Oh, you know that he didn't go far. This Caesar killed Paul. Now, as we pick the story from the text where we read, Paul was on board a merchant ship on his way to Rome. A centurion by the name Julius was in charge of the prisoners. So they had started the journey by the coasts of Asia. Oh, Paul was with Dr. Luke who writes the story. And Aristarchus, a Macedonian of Thessalonica. Aristarchus Aristarchus, that's Aris, the name. Aris, Aristarchus. Aristarchus. And from Admetria, Admetria, they sailed under Cyprus because of the wind. And the journey progressed over the sea of Cilicia. And finally they came to Pamphylia. Pamphylia, and they finally arrived at a place known as Myra. And when you are in Acts chapter 7 and verse 
9 the Bible says that Paul admonished them and spoke to the people that a lot will be lost if we continue to sail but they wouldn't listen to Paul why should they listen to him and they had generals on board they had men who understood the seas they had people who had experience with that journey and so they listened to Paul and said you must be out of your mind we are used to this sea we know how it operates we are able to control our vessels we do not need a word from you Paul oh Paul if your word cannot save you then why should we listen to you oh today the gospel is being preached and men look at the preacher and wonder that why listen to you preacher why should we listen to what you say why should we hearken to the voice of God but child of God as that preacher said that day that there is a storm that is coming there is a storm that is coming you know humanity sometimes uh, 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 you know amazes me you know when corona struck and everyone was rendered useless and, and suddenly churches were reduced to non-essentials now the church is not important the government says stay at home oh if someone had said last year that we are approaching tumultuous times how many people would have believed it or oh, today I say that a worse storm is on the way I do not know its nature. I can't put a finger on it. But what I understand that if there was a time for you to connect to Jesus this is the time for very grievous days are ahead of us. Oh, there is a storm that is coming. A storm that's going to shake the foundations of faith. A storm that will shake those that are not hinged on Christ Jesus. A storm that's going to throw everyone in disarray. Oh, there is a storm on the way. You know, Noah preached this message. And for 120 years he stayed, there is a storm coming. Oh, but they couldn't believe him. Because some had just gotten promoted. Or some had just gotten married. Others had just gotten successful ventures in business. Oh, it seems like all indicators were that things will be fine. No preached of a storm. No one believed Mr. Noah. Oh, in Matthew 24 and verses 36 and 37, Jesus says, as it were in the days of Noah, as it were in the days before the flood, Oh, men were eating and they were drinking and giving in marriage and being taken in marriage and they knew not says the Bible until the floods came and took them all away oh I beg to disagree on that text because Noah had done his work they knew not means they refused to accept the truth. They rejected the call of God. When the storm came, none, none amongst them escaped. Oh, when you come to chapter 27, the book of Acts, the Bible says there was a wind. There was a tempestuous wind called Eurocledon. This wind from the east, which shook the ark, shook the boat, rather, and it got to a point that they were so scared the wind 
wind was boisterous. They couldn't control the ship wherein they were. And so they let the ship move however it wanted. When you come to verse number 18, all the merchants that had things they wanted to take for business, now they had to toss these things into the sea. Oh, is someone following me? That all these things that you labor and fight for daily, a day will come when you throw them into the sea. Oh, you will throw all these things that you fight for. All this clamor for the earthly things. Oh, you will throw them away. You know, as a pastor, every time I attend a funeral, and sometimes I see the funeral of big and mighty men. I, I am amazed that they can't even carry a bicycle with them. They, they can't take a bicycle. They can't carry anything. Their bank accounts remain the way they are. They can't go with their bank accounts. Oh, I was told of a man who wanted to be buried his wealth. He had a lot of money in the bank. And so when he died, because in his will he had said, I must be buried with all my money. So that he had two, some wise children and who thought through this situation. They said we can't, we, can't, we can't throw money away because dad put in his will that he must be buried with his money. And so one of the smart children picked his checkbook. He wrote a check for the father. And when the father was being buried, he put the valid check in the coffin. And told the father you can go with the check. Cash it when you get there. My friend, you cannot be buried with your money. You can be buried with your money. You can't be buried with your cars. You can't be buried with your wealth. Or there comes a time when the storm gets to your doorstep. That money becomes useless. Material wealth becomes becomes useless. And sometimes what's left in the lips of a child of God is a cry that, Pastor, pray for me. Pray for me. Oh, if only they had listened to Paul, they would have stayed behind and the storm would have passed. But what can an aging, balding, bow-legged preacher say? You know, they tell me Paul was bow-legged. And, and Paul had also grown taller than his hair, like I have done. I am glad that Paul grew taller than his hair. Because I can now relate to Paul, amen? <laughs> Paul grew taller than his hair. And he was also bow-legged. And so what could he say? And he was also an old man. Now he can't convince anyone. But I am glad that because of the ship, God decides, because of Paul rather, God decides to save every single person in the ship. Because of his servant Paul. Oh, let me tell you members of Milimani and the guests that have come to visit with us that it's always because of one saint that God preserves a nation. one one person that's holding this church and together. And because of this one person, God has preserved the church. He says, I am not going to kill anyone because of my servant Paul. All the Bible says that Paul stood amidst the shipmates and he said to them, I exhort you to be of good cheer. For there shall be no loss of any man's life 
but the sheep will be lost for there stood by me this night the angel of God whose I am and whom I serve oh child of God will the angel of God visit with you what an encouragement this was for the members of this sheep that their lives will be preserved though they would look a lot of things when you come to verse number 31 or there are people who decided they wanted to disembark from the ship and in verse 31 Paul speaks to them and Paul says these words except ye abide in the ship you cannot be saved except ye abide in the ship not speaking to some seventh day Adventist who is contemplating walking out of this ship. Oh child of God unless you abide in this ship you will not be saved. Or this church may have its issues. You know the pen of inspiration says that when it was seen that the church was almost about to fall but the word of God says it will look like about to fall but it won't this ship will have a lot challenges. Oh, strangers will come into this ship. Who will shake this ship? Oh, like Doeg. We talked about Doeg the other time. We will have Doegs in the church. Who will shake the ship? Some will be elders. Some will be pastors like myself. Others will be prominent members amongst us. They will shake the ship it will seem that this ship is about to sink. But God says, no leaving this ship. No leaving this ship. Except ye abide in the ship. You will not be saved. You will not be saved. Except ye abide in the faith of Jesus. You will not be saved. This faith in the storm of seas but we cannot be out of this faith. Oh, the Bible says we have but one faith. We have one Lord. We have one spirit. And the Bible is our foundation. Our doctrines remain grounded in the faith. Oh, my sister, do not disembark. Oh, the winds of doctrines that howl at our sheep of faith may threaten a saint of God but I have good news this afternoon that Jesus is the captain of the ship oh someone say amen Jesus is our captain he is at the helm Trust Jesus to take you to the shore. Trust Jesus to take you to the shore. Just look unto Jesus. You will go get to the shore. Jesus is the captain of this ship. And Jesus has never failed. He will steer the ship of faith to the shore. Trust the master. The ship may be weak. Am I speaking to someone? The ship may be weak. You may see so many holes in the ship that letting in water in the ship. But trust the captain. Trust the captain. The captain will steer this ship to the shore. Or oh, the Bible says when they had escaped to the, the ship, they came to the island of Melita. And now that brings us to Acts chapter 28. 
And when they came to the island of Melita, the Bible says that barbarous people came and showed them kindness. These were strangers and people of a different speech. But they showed them kindness. Oh, can I speak to someone this afternoon that sometimes our help comes from unlikely quarters. Sometimes those whom we depended upon may fail. Sometimes our help comes from people who are not our relatives. Sometimes our help comes from people who do not even love us. Our help comes from unlikely sources. I'm speaking to someone listening to me this afternoon who got a job that was given him from someone whom he didn't know. Is that true? That there is someone right now drawing checks who is getting paid from a job that a stranger offered him. Am I speaking to someone? A total stranger. Your cousin, your uncle in Nairobi, they didn't help you. Or you went to Nairobi seeking a job but couldn't get it. They wanted you to babysit their children. And one day God steps in as you're walking down the streets of Nairobi or wherever and you tender application hoping that God will answer your prayers. A stranger picks your papers and looks at you and hires you. Let me tell you this child of God. When they abandoned you, God sends a stranger. When you are deserted by your own relatives, God sends a stranger. Oh, God has always sent strangers to his people. Because the Bible says that our God is a very present help in time of trouble. Oh, these strangers, the Bible says they will light a fire that will warm your heart. When people come out of a storm, when those whom you know cannot take care of you, trust God to send a stranger. And a stranger will extricate you from your situation. Oh, they had come out of the fire and they see the benevolence of these strangers. Oh, child of God, God, you may have gone through a spiritual storm or you may have had a major, major serious problem in your spiritual life but when you come out of this situation now God has prepared a fire for you. But let me speak on the converse and I want to speak to my church. I want to speak to the Seventh Day Adventist church because God has given you the depository of truth. The challenge with many a seventh day adventist is when a child of God has come from a storm instead of lighting a fire to warm them we have sent many back into the storm. I want to speak to the church now that if there is a young person who got pregnant out of wedlock in my now this is the one to light a fire for. She should not and must not be subject to the church board. This is the time to talk about her and pray about for her. But I know I am singing to a God. I cannot hear. I'm, speaking, I'm singing songs to a God. Because I no, I'm not, they are not gods. I'm, I'm using an illustration. I'm singing oh, like one singing to a God. And the problem is this. That when our brother falls into ill repute, we are the ones who tear clothes from him and expose him. We are the ones who mess people's lives. Now, I want to speak from my heart because I have two days and I go my way. Oh, I'm not going to
Ongeka au makasani. I don't care. Nafungua roho yangu, Bwana asifiwe. I want to speak to you. I don't want to do. I want to speak to you. Can you look at how you have dealt with children of God in this church? Can you, can, you, can, you, can you remember how you've dealt so harshly with people who needed warmth? I was in one of the churches in Nairobi. A little girl, an ambassador, got pregnant out of wedlock. But the way the girl was treated... I, I still ask my questions if these people are Christians. I ask myself if these people are Christians. Because I think if Christ was in my place, if Christ was in our church, then you know that Christ would have gone to this girl. Christ would have embraced this girl. When the child would be born, Christ would have carried the child and dedicated the child. But we are people who think that they are holy than everybody. Who do not touch sinners nor speak to sinners. And I want to declare that openly and I don't care. That that's the spirit of demons. That's the spirit of demons I have said. I have said. I have said. I have said. Do you know that it took the blood of Jesus for a sinner to get salvation? Do you know that? Do you know, do you know what it meant? Jesus coming from glory to be born in this life. Do, do, you, do, you, understand, do you understand the shame of being crucified naked because of people? Why can't you take people seriously in church? Why can't you have compassion? You know very well that you are not even good. But God has shown you mercy. You know that you are evil in your heart. But God has shown you mercy. Why can't you show people mercy in church? Why can't you show people mercy? Why can't you have mercy on human beings? Why can't you have mercy on people? Why can't you have mercy on people? Sitting in small groups, judging people, condemning people. Why can't you show people love? What's wrong with my church? What's wrong with my church? What's wrong with my church? Oh, you know that this church, if something catches you, if something, if, if word came out that Collins, Collins, Pastor Collins was caught drunk, that Pastor Collins was caught drunk, I can bet my bottom dollar no one will talk to me ever. I know you wouldn't talk to me. I know you wouldn't love me. I know you wouldn't invite me to your homes. I know, I know I am a member of this church. I know. I know, I know, I'm a member of this church. I know, I know how it rolls. And that's why we have so many people pretending to be holy because they know that the brethren will not show them much. We just need to be saved, children of God. We need to be saved. That's the truth. We just need to be saved. We need to be Christians. We need to be Christians. When someone has come out of a storm, light a fire and keep them warm. Embrace them in Jesus. I think this is the person for us to visit every day. This is the place to camp. This is the place the church should always be because they are children of God. Stop this drama, this pretense. This is not going anywhere. Instead of talking about the sister, pray for the sister and visit the sister. Embrace the sister and show them the love of Christ. That's what God will want this church to do. You know, the challenge with the Laodicean church is that they have no love. Oh, they know how to keep the doctrines. That's what they see every day. Doctrine, 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 doctrine. But the love that binds them to the souls of men is missing. It's very empty. It's very empty. There's no, no, no. there's no compassion in the church. Strange. Yet they are children of God. Oh, God have mercy on the church. God have mercy on our church. 
I speak from my heart. You know, I'm a preacher who says what I'm speaking from my heart. That we must change the way we deal with human beings. I know I may have my challenges. But you are not holy either. Your ways are also known in some quarters. So as I bear with you in Christ, you also bear with me in Christ. Am I speaking to We must learn to bear one another. Because eventually we will be saved by grace. No amount of good works will save anything. It's Jesus and Jesus alone. Period. Full stop. Jesus. Fully Jesus. Everything Jesus. He is the one who will pick us up. Wash us in his blood. Clothe us in his righteousness. Open the gates for us. Jesus and Jesus alone. I want to come to the end of my story and say a word and pray. The Bible says that Paul was collecting the fire. Would you know the story? Paul we read it. Read it. And as he was speaking the fire would to, 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 to add more warmth in the fire. The Bible says that there was a viper that was hiding in the wood. And while people were watching, because Paul seemed to have been doing it alone. Oh, I, th I thank God for the man of God, Paul. That when every other person was shivering and trying to hold themselves, the man of God steps out and goes looking for fire. And he picked the firewood. And as he was putting the firewood in the fire, the Bible says that a viper, a venomous snake that should have killed him in seconds, sprang out of the fire and fastened itself in his hands. And as he was waving the hand and people saw, and the Bible tells me that Paul looked looked at the fire again. Uh, am I no speaking to someone? And he shook the beast in the fire. Shook the beast in the fire. The, the beast fell in the fire and was burnt. Now I want to say this and I want you to listen to me. The one thing that I have learned in this life that sometimes a good thing can be a source of pain. Paul had good intentions. Paul had good plans for the people. But the good intentions, a serpent came out of it. All oh, good intentions sometimes, sometimes are sources of evil. Oh, sometimes I have learned something else. That it was the heat of the fire that brought out the viper. It was the heat that brought out the viper. Now, in this instant, you must understand that the heat illustrates the good thing that Paul wanted to do. And I want to say this, child of God, sometimes the good that you do we will expose evil. The good that you do will bring out evil that you may not know. But you must continue to do good as a child of God. Just do good and don't care. Though evil may come from the good thing, but there is a God in heaven who will protect you. When a good thing, when an evil thing comes out of a good thing. Oh, your work is to do the shaking. Am I speaking to someone? Yours is to do the shaking. Yours is to do the shaking. And this I want to say without apology. That sometimes you get to a point in your Christian life when you realize who the enemy is. Oh, it's time to shake them. It's time to shake them. Oh, if they are the ones that have been taking you to the witch doctor, shake them in the fire. If they are the ones that have been messing your life, shake them into the fire. Shake them in the fire of good. Shake them in the fire of good. Shake it, shake it, shake it in the fire. Whatever it is that messes your life, shake it, shake it out. Shake it out. Shake it out. Shake it out. Oh, I'm speaking to someone who should delete a telephone number in their phone. 
we could just shake it. Shake it. Shake it away. I'm speaking to someone who needs to cut off some friends. Shake them away. I know I'm speaking to someone who needs to stop some silly business. Cut that business away. When you realize that this is the enemy, shake them in the fire. Shake them in the fire. Oh, I learned something else. That God does when sometimes we are in situations. Oh, child of God, sometimes God will save you from the venom. But God will not save you from the bite. Am I speaking to someone? God can allow the serpent to bite you. God will allow it to come. And you will feel the pain in your hand. But I thank God that he is able to save you from the venom. That though the snake may bite, but God will save you from the poison. Am I speaking to someone? I know I'm speaking to someone who's experiencing pain as we speak. Because the serpent has beaten. The serpent has beaten. I want to tell you this child of God. Oh, there is a God who sometimes allows us to go through situations. But he saves us from the poison. He will not allow you to die. He will not allow you to die. And so as a soldier of the cross, I want you to bear it bravely. I want you to speak to the serpent and tell the serpent, bite some more. Continue biting if you care. Because I know my God will save me from the venom. He may allow me to be beaten. But I I want to tell you this. He will not allow me to die. Oh, child of God, you who's been beaten by a serpent, you know, you know how they had sat down and determined your end. Am I speaking to someone? You know how they had written you off as a Christian. Oh, the serpent had taken its bite. Do you remember when you used to come to Milimani Church and you had a heavy heart? And, and, and you were in pain when you saw some of the members because of what they did and what they said about you, you, you feel the frustrations of having to worship with them because the serpent had beaten but I want to tell you this just look unto Jesus though they have beaten you their venom will not get you am I speaking to someone? the Bible says in this story oh you should read this story that the Bible says that after Paul had been beaten all the people now stood back and said now if you see something happen to this man then it's because he's quite an evil fella. He, he's, he's a wicked man. He has and done something wrong. Rich, in in fact, they said that Paul was a murderer. And that's why even though he had escaped the storm, the serpent was waiting for him because he was a murderer. But the Bible says something and that will be my final statement. And that to me is powerful that they waited to see Mm. They, they waited to see Paul swell because of the poison. They waited to see Paul drop down and die. But the Bible says they waited a long time. They waited a long time. Hallelujah, someone. They waited a long time. They waited a long time. If it was my translation, then lokona. One day I must do a Bible commentary. And, and if it was me to write, I would say that they waited until harvest time. And they harvested and ate. They waited until it was time to go back planting. And they planted and the plants grew. They waited from one harvest to another harvest. And Paul was still alive. Oh child of God, you know if you trust in Jesus, or oh, your enemy will wait for a long time. Or oh, your enemy will wait for a long, long time. 
Lord. Or they will watch and hope you die. But the Lord will have covered his own child. No venom will touch a child of God. No venom will touch you. All you need to do is trust in God. And you know when they had waited a long time. And they did not see him die. The Bible says that they stood up and said. This one is a God. From a murderer to a God. And that, that transition is very fast. Murderer to God. From a murderer. One who takes life. To a God. God, who takes life to a God who gives life. That transformation is very fast. Now listen to me child of God. I know you're going through a lot and I'm speaking to you individually. I'm speaking to you. You have gone through a lot. You have been through a storm. When you came out of the storm, then you found the brother, brethren were not happy. And, and their serpent came and beat you. I know the pain of being beaten by a serpent. I know it's painful the experience you've been through. But I want to tell you this child of God. Keep on trusting. Keep on trusting. Keep on trusting. There is a God in heaven who is watching over the affairs of men. There is a God in heaven. There is a God in heaven. A God in heaven. I, I believe that there is a God in heaven. Oh, Daniel chapter 2 and verse number 28, the Bible says, there is a God in heaven. There is a God in heaven. These injustices will not continue forever. There is a God in heaven. There is a God in heaven. heaven. There is a God in heaven. My message this afternoon was to encourage a sister or a brother. Was to encourage a father or a mother who has gone through some storms in life. That there is a God who will preserve your life. He will keep you through the storm. And he will keep you in the bite. There is a God in heaven. There is a God in heaven. And so today we want to offer a prayer. And I want it to be a prayer of celebrating God. To thank God for the storms that we have been through and we have come out. And I want to pray also for someone who's going through a storm right now. And I want to pray for someone whose friends have refused to give him warmth or And I want this message to give you warmth. I want this to encourage you that there is Jesus who is a friend of sinners and who loves you so much who loves you so much he loves you so deeply he loves you so widely he loves you that there is no height to measure there is a God in heaven who loves you now if you are in any of these categories I want to ask pastor to come and join me in this prayer if you are in any of the categories you are going through a storm. You have come out of a storm. You have been chased away by friends or by church members or whoever it could be. You have come out of that situation. When you thought that you were doing good, a serpent has come out of the good thing and it has beaten you and you feel the pain. I want to pray for you. Come. I want to pray for you. Come. If you are in a storm, you know yourself. You are in a storm. You have just come out of a storm. The serpent is here with you. You are feeling the pain. You just need Jesus to help you. As we are going to pray with pastor, I welcome you to come. Come now. Come now. Just come, just come. You, you know that you know you know how the storm has worked on you. How it has shaken the foundations of your faith. You know that a seventh day Adventist, you had gotten to a point you had said you are quitting this church. And, and you have come back. Now you desire to be rebaptized and get into the faith fully. Whatever is your pain. 
God has seen your pain. God has seen your pain. Come, let's pray together. I know they talked about you. I know they messed you. I know they, 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 they put you in mud and trampled you underfoot. But God has heard it. Or oh, like Leah, we say, God has heard my cry. God has heard my cry. There is a God who listened in those meetings. While, while they were planning for you, he was listening. While they were scheming for your downfall, he was listening. That God is calling you to come. So that we can pray together. I want to offer a short prayer and hand the microphone over to my friend and pastor so that he can offer a prayer of blessing to his congregation. A child of God, I want to assure you that there is a God who will save you from the venom of the serpent. There is a God who will save you from the venom. He may allow you to suffer, but he will take care of everything. Eventually, it will be to the glory of his name. It will be to the glory of his name. Let's pray, Father and my God. I thank you so much because like my brothers and my sisters, I too have been in a storm. I had gotten to a point in my spiritual life that I thought this was not worth anything. But I am glad through your messenger, you brought me back into the faith and you strengthened me in spite of myself. I thank thee, my friend, because I have understood that sometimes you allow your children, your own babies in the faith, you can allow them to be beaten by serpents. But I am glad that you saved them from the venom. Behold, your sons and your daughters have come. Oh Lord, they have not come to us. They have come to you. And every one of them can tell their story. If we had time, this will not come to an end. Everyone has their unique stories of the storms they have been in life. But they have come, oh Lord, today to celebrate your goodness. They have come to acknowledge your power. They have come, oh Lord, to say thank you for taking them out of a storm taking them out of a difficult situation and planting their feet again on solid ground. They have come, O oh Lord, in their pain and distress. They have come in their shame, O oh Lord, and nakedness. They have come for they have no one. They only have you, Jesus. They have come. I know I'm speaking to someone whose tears are welling because, O oh Lord, they can vividly remember how it all played out. They know the pain, oh Lord, of being beaten by a serpent. They know the pain of being rejected by brethren. They know the pain, oh Lord, of being ostracized and, oh Lord, being maligned because of what they believe and what they stand for. They know this pain, but they have come. They have come to thank you, oh Lord. They are praying this afternoon together with me that, oh Lord, save us from the venom. Save us from the venom. Save us, O oh Jesus, together with our families from the venom of the serpent. The Bible in Revelation 12 speaks of the serpent that all while is for the devil and what he does to the children of your people. I pray, O oh Lord, preserve us from his venom. Though he may bite us sometimes, we may lose jobs, we may lose our health, we may lose our children, we may lose everything that we hold dear, but we are glad Dear Lord, that you will keep us safe from the venom. That eventually we'll be able to join with the saints as we go to heaven someday. I thank you, my friend, because I know you've heard me. I thank thee because I know you've answered me in accordance to your will and to the glory of your powerful name. I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Catch one of 
Marki chema milimani nyasai kage wacho ni nyasai wa God yerakamani. Nikechi nikechi ngiteko ni mano mako wa keno mako ge nyasachwa kingi makawono. Wa God yerakamano nyasachwa. Niche nyitindi majoga magedago mon magedago gichuo magedago dikorose tiopoge. Nyasai ye ni modo kibedu wangi makawono. Nitie nyitindi kai manyitigi magi nyolo magi se chandre ni kechgin kade o kinya sai di korugionge to teko mario se makoge kendo ngono mario se umoge omiyo gibiro kapi wangi ini kagi goni ero kamano inya sai wa mor ni se bedo kodi nitie nyitindi inya sai Majok magi gogo ala, atakunde ki mago ala. Masayo se duwani mundu tieki. Gise inyore, nikecho eni magi goyo. Gise chandore, ekin jok magi tie diergi. Ti ye ni mundu kibet mangema, wapako kendo wadendo nyingi. Wagoni ero kamano, nikecho nitie nyi tindi kai, mani e tije kende mikepe mupogre upogre gwenge waka. Kyo ni kechok magi tiyo go. Gigik magi se timo ni. Gadi ramari magi se chung niye. Nyasai gise nano chandok maduong. Gise nano pek. Nitiye nyitindi kaya nyasai. Maka nisa nini ose bedo kamo se meyo gilete chungi. Ose kodgi ose wokwo mugi maraj. Kade o kin nyasai. Kyo di koro giyonge e chokrok maju. Iye ni gichaki yu teko nyadi chiel. Kendo gichunge chokro kai kagi pako kendo gidendo nyingi. Nikech gingeyo jalo mani giteko. Jalo mani ginyalo. Jalo mani waro paulo. E jalo mose chungkot ginda luduto kendo chungkot gika wono. Omiyo gichungo kagi biro. Kwa wachone aleluya. Nyasacho ose bedo. Nitie nyithini machungo tamo kama gintiere. Agi gombo ni mwodo gichungi bi. Yogi yote nyasai. Otamo ge. Yogi geno kuomi nyasai. Madi winji ge kama gintiere. Uye ayye anie kiche ni nyasai. Kika nyathini moro. Ae chokrog ni gichunyi mapek. Iwacho ni iti kaka watingo re mapek. Kimisike waduto. Wakil wa ye eti ya msalaba. Kanisa nini eti ya msalaba ni. Wale mwoni mwondo nyithindi go bi. Ngano mwako mwoni mwondo chakwuth mwonyi kodi kakadho kumbatiso. Nasai kika chunye pa kepare. Chakwuth mwonyi kabuwa. Nige yuduonge chokrogni. Waro waduto. Ikwane duogo mari. Miwa yot kumpek mwase bedogo. Nitie jogo maponi ye chunyu luenye. Lochne ge, kaka ni lochne pa ulo, ni kichi ne nya sachwa, wakwa yo kawa genu, kendo kawa ye, enyi kristo mwarwa. Amen. Kare, ya winja na watieko, bedo, chenru marinjili, ya wangu diyo chienga, kanesa mamili manyo yugis, Achela chelwe chagiyo bedo kawuk ni ondamo proche konokta ngwane FM. Nyinga Freda wete bedo kagimidusa Elijah Utieno. Aduwo ki studio mbaro elwe Nick Mule. Pongo nyaka laga madwele kodi nyaka kendo kinyo wangu diyo chengter. Milibani yugis. Yesai madwele ya winyona. Aleluya. Wako ayo wendo amano lemo wani kikuwogi wasaa ukabesa. Wagombo ni mondo wachokre kanya kula kodu. Welo mani tiere. Mondu bede diero. Wala ando ni ya. Jogo mose kelo siengo. Hapo.